Hello and welcome back everybody to lesson number seven in this FS Academy Navigator training series. Today's lesson, Frostbite. We're going to take our trusty Cessna 152 into some cold weather. So let's begin. flying over the Skåne region of southern Sweden to look at how we need to adapt our navigation methods when facing a snow-swept landscape. We're flying southbound towards Sodafuern Lake, which you can see up ahead. Yep. The low winter sun is lighting up the lake nicely, making it a great feature to use. Beautiful snowy countryside here. We need to ensure that we are protecting the aircraft and its systems against the cold. The airspeed indicator works by measuring the pressure of the oncoming air inside the pitot tube, which you can see on the underside of the left wing. If this tube becomes obstructed by ice, it will stop functioning and we will get unreliable readings on the airspeed indicator, ASI. The pitot tube is fitted with an electronic heating element which we can turn on to prevent ice. Turn on the pitot heat using the switch by your right knee. You may need to hide the oak. Good, now the pitot will stay warm and won't give us any trouble in these cold conditions. Unhide the oak if you need to. The lake is near to the border of Malma airspace. We'd like to enter the Malma CTR so that we can fly west towards Malma city. Tune Sweden Control into COM1, frequency 134.98. Alright. Uh, 9.8. Sweden Radar, Sierra Echo, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha, 2,400 feet. Soda Fuern for Malmö Zone Transit. Sierra Echo, Foxtrot, Sierra Alpha, Sweden Radar. Be advised we have a radar system failure in Malmö, causing low radar performance. Remain outside. Roger, Sierra Echo, Foxtrot, Sierra Alpha will monitor your frequency. Looks like we're going to have to take the long way around Malmö Airport. We had planned for this as we can never guarantee that a transit will be approved, so we just need to fly our planned route. Once we reach the lake, we'll fly our leg to Eastad. Be sure to be stable at 2,400 feet and 100 knots as we reach the lake. Okay. Slow down just a little bit. at the lake. Come on, trim out. Now turn to heading 141 en route to Eastad. 141. Turn in now. This leg will be for eight minutes. We're monitoring Sweden control with COM1. It's cold outside, but indications are in the green and pitot heat is on. Fuel level looks more than enough for our route to Malmö city. We'll use an en route fix of Kragerholms Lake, which is the last and most southerly of this group of water bodies. We have planned for a wind of 130 at 10. Let's talk about how things look different after snowfall. Many features that would have been useful in the summer have now been obscured, although most major features such as highways, airport runways and railway lines will be kept clear of snow. 
the lakes along our route look to be easily identifiable today, but be aware that when frozen, their shapes and appearance can change, or be covered completely by snowfall. Minor roads will often be blanketed and not visible from the air, so these may be unreliable for use as a waypoint. Keep us on course towards Eastad, and we'll check our drift at the lake, our en route fix. Alright. We're now reaching our en route fix. The route center line passes through the small island within this lake, so use the drift lines on the map to estimate any drift and double that drift to get a heading correction. Our next leg takes us from Eastad westbound, but we need to dip underneath the CTA as we were not permitted to enter due to the radar issue. The floor of the CTA is 1,500 feet, so take us down to 1,400 feet, so that we're ready by the time we reach Eastad. Okay. Aim to keep 100 knots in the descent to preserve our timings. We're a little right of course. Make a 10 degree drift correction to the left. Getting close to Eastad now. Aim for the roundabout to the north side of town. Looking for the roundabout. Go outside for that. It's probably where the POI is. I can't really tell from here. Five minutes, definitely not going to make eight minutes. I assume the roundabout's just straight in the, yeah, there's the roundabout, I can see it. It's right in the middle. Here we are at Eastad, so turn right heading 238. Right heading 238. too early. There we go. This leg has an ETE of nine minutes. All right, reset and timer. Continue to monitor the radar frequency in case they reopen. Let's check that the heading indicator remains aligned with the compass. That's looking good. Engine temps are still okay and the fuel is checked. This leg takes us to the southernmost tip of Sweden, Smigahuk. And we will use the town of Abacors as our fix. Okay. overhead the town of Abacors, our en route fix. Using the drift lines on the map, let's check our tracking. Looking good, we're right on track. Oh, made this one. Yep, sailboat. Four minutes into this leg. Coastlines are very useful in the winter months, as the sea does not freeze unless in an extremely cold part of the world. This means that the coastline remains unchanged through the year, but you may lose some potential point features along its length if they become obscured. We're getting near to Smeekerhook, a small minutes. marina on the coastline. I mean, it's about right on this one. We'll carry on 
start tracking the coast as we make our way around Malma Airport airspace. Make a right turn to heading 279. 279. Good. This heading will also track the coast as we're on our way to the canal at Hulvika. ETE for this leg is 8 minutes, using the harbour at Trelleboy as our en route fix. Right, 8 minutes. Trelleboy is a major ferry port, allowing transport to Germany and Poland, and is known as the Continental Bridge. As we pass overhead Trelleboy, we can compare our tracking with the route drawn on the map. It looks like we're right overhead the Trelleboy harbour, putting us on track. Yep, looks good. Alright, we're about five minutes into our eight minute leg. We're looking for the canal through Hulviken. This is the Falsterbu Canal, which opened in 1941 to allow safe passage as the route out to sea was heavily mined in the Second World War. I can see it. See why they put it in there. Saves a lot of time. We've reached the canal, so turn right heading 005 towards the turning torso building in Malma. Seven minutes. We'll get a great view of the city with the Urasund Bridge and Turning Torso Apartment Block, which is where we're heading. Let's check that the heading indicator remains aligned with the compass. That's looking good. Engine temps are still okay and the fuel is checked. Keep us at 1,400 feet. Now that we're past Hulviken, we are no longer underneath the 1,500 foot CTA, so we can climb back up to 2,400 feet. Take us up to 2,400 feet, allowing the speed to come back for a good climb rate. Great, flying a little higher gives us more options in case we had to glide and also improves our view and flight efficiency. Assuming this uh, candlestick looking thing is the torso. Look to the left to get a clear view of the Urasund Bridge, oh, wow. where traffic can cross by road or rail towards Copenhagen in Denmark on the other side. That's cool. At 10 miles in length, this is Europe's longest combined road and rail crossing. Part bridge and part tunnel, the roadway is on top and the railroad below, which stretch out to an artificial island designated as a nature reserve. Very cool. As we reach the edge of Malma, keep a lookout for other traffic and places to land in the event of an engine failure. We can right. clearly see the turning torso up ahead. Tall buildings remain largely unchanged in the winter, making them useful for point features in snowy conditions. No traffic, but very beautiful scenery. Five 
five minutes into our leg. I think it's eight minutes, he said. saved us some time by transiting the Malma zone, but the radar failure caused us to take the long way round, which allowed us to learn something along the way. Next, we'll take a look at how the picture changes after sundown, and learn how to find our way after dark. Well, there you go, folks. That's how we do it in the snow. Next lesson, it'll be in the dark. I'll catch you then.